Welcome to our last video in chapter seven on internal controls and cash. This is learning objective number three, preparing a bank reconciliation. All right. How many of you have prepared a bank reconciliation? This is a question where I asked a show of hands twice last year, once to a group of students in your class. So, you know, think about raising your hand or at least mentally raising your hand if you prepared a bank reconciliation. The second time I asked was during a financial literacy lightning talk that I gave for a conference last February. The results for both groups of people, uh, the one with 80 students uh, in introductory financial accounting and the other with a couple hundred um, people, uh, many were librarians, many were uh, management information systems uh, or information systems people, professors, uh, master's students, a number of professionals across um, the Atlantic. So both groups of people, very few people raised their hands and it makes sense. You know, we tend to think, oh, accountants are people that prepare bank reconciliations. Well, then I told both groups of people, you're wrong. And they said, what? I'm like, I bet you have prepared a bank reconciliation. And they're like, hmm. Um, but before I said that, I said, hey, wait a minute. Sorry, wrong question. Um, show of hands, how many of you have, um, you know, checked your bank statement and there was a different number on your bank statement than you had in your head. Maybe it wasn't even your bank statement. Maybe you pulled out cash uh, for a fun night out or to you know, buy some snacks, maybe at the movie theater, and you checked your withdrawal uh, receipt, and there was a different number that it said that you had left in your bank than you were expecting. Has this ever happened to anybody? Oh, many, many hands in both groups of people uh, were raised. And I said, cool. So then I picked my target, I mean person, uh, and I walked closer to them. And I, you know, this is always fun in a group of people, uh, especially, uh, let's just say, not everybody is as extro extroverted. And there is somebody with a microphone or, you know, kind of walking up. And I find somebody that like, looks like they want to talk, um, but yet <laughs> maybe doesn't want to talk a lot. I say, cool, what did you do? Once there was a different number on the receipt than what you had in their head. And they said, well, I went on my phone and I looked at all the transactions and I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, what happened? And they're like, and I realized that I had spent some money that I had forgot about. I'm like, cool, awesome. And then I went uh, to somebody else and I'm like, hey, what happened? Same thing. Well, one student last year, I asked what happened and she said, there was an error on the bank. And I was like, oh my goodness, what did you do? She's like, I went down to the bank, I talked to the teller, she got her manager involved, and uh, within a week, they had fixed the mistake and put the money back in my account. Amazing. So do you know what all of these instances had in common? Well, <laughs> um, yeah, everybody here um, that raised their hand if they checked their bank balance and had a difference than what was in their head, Everybody there had prepared a bank reconciliation. So again, cash is cash is cash. Cash is thing that organizations do and cash is something that we interact with likely on a daily basis. So when we're looking at bank reconciliations, all we're doing is seeing, hey, is the cash that the company thought they had in the bank matching what the bank says they have in a bank? No different than what you or I would do. So in a company context, when would we, um, why do we use a bank? Well, we use a bank to safeguard our cash. We, as a company, don't want to just have a bunch of cash laying around. It's susceptible to theft. Thinking back to the start of video number one, many of you said to um, put it in a vault, um, perhaps, uh, you know, send it to another bank that's more secure. We want to safeguard that cash. When we use a bank, it also gives us a record. So it gives us documentation of the transactions, what's coming in to our bank account, cash deposits, what's going out, cash receipts. So when we have a number on our financial statements and we have a number within our bank account, so what our bank says we have, those two accounts need to be reconciled. And so 
Understanding the debits and credits for each of these, we have to remember that the bank is itself an organization and your books, your books is an organization. So let's look at, let's ignore this column. Let's look at our books. When we deposit money, we debit cash, credit, um, whatever it went out to do. So perhaps it was for a sale. We debit cash and we credit revenue. Cool. All right. Um, maybe it was to record a collection from a customer. Cool. We debit cash because cash increases and we credit accounts receivable. Thank you so much, accounts receivable, for settling up. All right. So now let's put this out of our mind and now look at it as if we were the bank. The bank's job is to hold your cash. So when you put your money in the bank, it is a liability to the bank because they are, yes, their cash increases when you deposit. However, they owe you that money. So when the bank amount cash balance increases from deposits, it's actually a credit. And then when you write a check, then that means that the bank is going to be paying that am amount out so that their liability uh, decreases. So then when you write a check, we actually have a debit there. All right, a little bit weird and wonky, but I feel like when you put on the two different hats, hey, are we looking at it from the company's point of view or are we looking at it from the bank's point of view? That helps, that plus a lot of practice helps kind of make sense of this. So no worries if it's a little fuzzy now. Uh, it's something that I definitely you know, don't do on a day-to-day -day basis and not need to think of it as two separate hats when I do it. All right, so there's gonna be some differences, people. Um, unless we use um, bank wires, although I will tell you a personal story about myself and a woman named Deborah at one of the large banks here. Let us just say uh, that Deborah was cool um, was sending a bunch of my money out in the world, um, knowing that it likely would land via wire and take 12 days to come back. But anyways, um, usually when you electronically send money um, from one bank account to another, it is relatively instantaneous. However, when there is literally somebody taking cash from your store and putting it into the bank, otherwise known as deposits in transit, there might be a timing difference. Uh, in Calgary, I know that they have kind of like an after hours, um, like a little slot, like looks like a mailbox where somebody would, customers would have their own envelopes from before, they would put in cash, and then they would deposit the money through this after hours slot. So while the bank is like, or sorry, while the organization is like, yeah, cool, cool, like this cash is in the bank, therefore it's on my like bank account, um, balance that rolls up to cash, it not might not be yet reflected on your online banking because nobody has opened up the envelope and put it into your bank account. So we might have a timing difference for deposits in transit. Similarly, if you are a company and you are writing those old school checks, you wrote that check. You're like, cool, I'm gonna credit my cash balance so I don't accidentally spend money I don't have but um, the bank still thinks you have the money because whoever you sent the check to hasn't cashed it yet or it hasn't been processed yet. So you might have an instance where you've already accounted for the cash going out, but the bank hasn't. So your bank balance is overstated. So those are our timing differences. Both parties can also make mistakes. Uh, and then we also have bank fees that you may not have accounted for, but the bank, bank certainly has. All right, so we need to reconcile all of these. Kind of like um, one of the participants who said, oh shoot, um, I had forgotten about some transactions that I had made. I forgot about some, out, um, some outstanding checks or you know, just I forgot, I made an error. So when you are reconciling between how much cash you think you have and how much cash the bank says you have, that's called reconciling for the timing differences and the errors. So we are going to adjust our books and or adjust our bank balance and such that the two equal. So our adjusted cash balance equals our reconciled bank balance. 
Just a friendly note though, we're gonna be doing actual debits and credits. We will never debit and credit the bank because they are not our company, okay? So when we're doing actual debits and credits, that is from our cash balance to our adjusted cash balance. And then we will be reconciling the bank balance such that the two match. That's the name of the game is to match them. And I kind of think of it like we are investigators. Okay. So what do we do? We start off with our cash balance per the bank statement. And we start off with our cash balance per the books. And again, the name of the game is to make sure they're equal. We will start with the bank and we'll like say, okay, cool. We're going to add in the deposits uh, in transit because that's just money that we've already accounted for that they haven't. So we need to add it in. Then we need to minus outstanding checks because, hey, we wrote some checks, but they haven't yet been cashed. So we need to reduce our balance per the bank. And then we have to plus or minus for any errors. That's when we get our reconcili reconciled bank amount. All right. Now on the other set of books, our bank, our personal books, pardon me, we take our starting cash balance and then we have to um, add in any uh, electronic fund transfers uh, or interest or other deposits that we weren't yet aware of. We need to minus any um, electronic fund transfer payments or service charges, monthly um, service charges or non-sufficient checks. Uh, that we weren't aware of fees, as well as plus or minus any errors. And then once this is done, this is done. People, I will tell you right now that the largest portion of um, variance in the chapter seven, eight mini test was because some students practiced in nail bank reconciliations, while other students um, did not appear to demonstrate uh, knowledge on bank reconciliations. So we're gonna do a big problem and um, then there's lots more practice, but just know that this is something that will take a bit of practice because uh, there's a couple different permutations and combinations. But once you've done the practice, it really should um, feel like you're just looking into your own cash balance, almost that easy. Uh, so we like infographics and then we like to summarize them in words. Just this as the last slide, just in some words, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so once we have that reconciliation where our number is equal, we need to journalize all, ah, all of those items. I'm gonna click it for emphasis. We need to journalize all of the changes that we made to our personal books cash balance, but we do not journalize the bank because this is not our company, no not our company. We do not adjust for the bank's timing differences. This will make up. We're journalizing because there was stuff going on that we didn't know about or didn't think about. We were like, oh, right. I bought those pair of jeans, but I didn't mentally adjust for it in my books. Gotcha. Okay. So let's do some practice. For each of the following items, I want you to identify where, um, where it is included in the bank reconciliation. So let me know, is it either bank increase or bank decrease? Or is it books increase for your company's books, increase or decrease? Or is there not applicable, meaning that there is no adjustment needed? Pause this video, give it a go, and I'll see you in just a moment to do our debriefing for this question. By the way, this is not the big bad question. This is the warm up. So please get warmed up. Talk soon. All right, so for number one, outstanding checks from a prior month, May, are still outstanding. Well, we are going to need to take our bank balance and minus it. Minus, bank, minus. All right. And that is because uh, we have already removed it from our books. We knew we wrote the check, we're gonna minus it but it hasn't been cashed yet and the bank is like, I don't know. Uh, so that's the adjustment that we need to make and therefore no journal entry. All right, let's go to the next one.
All right, and I just made this little legend uh, going forward. If it's bank, it'll be B-A, and if it's book, it'll be B-O. And that's just because my pre-little slotted items there will likely not, um, yeah, it'll just mess up my formatting. Okay, moving on. Outstanding checks from a prior month, May, are no longer outstanding. Well, if you said not applicable, then you're right. So prior month, we would have done um, a, a minus from the bank, but if it's since cleared, then the bank and the book amount are reconciled for that amount. Awesome work. Number three, uh, a deposit in transit from the current month, June. Well, we have it correct on our books, but the bank doesn't yet know there's money there. So we need to add that money to our bank balance. A company error in recording a check made out for $630, but they recorded it as $360. Well, that means that when we recorded it on our books, we recorded $360, but it should have been at $630. Therefore, we need to make an adjustment to our books and we need to decrease it because, you know, we thought we only had to pay $360 we had to pay a little, a lot more. Okay, a bank error in recording a company check made out for 200, but um, they recorded 290. So the bank made a mistake and um, we need to have the bank amount adjusted by $90 up. Just like the student in class, the bank can make a mistake and you gotta go ask them to fix it. Bank service charge. So in theory, our books, we know about it, but I guess we forgot to record it. So we need to <laughs> minus it from our bank. Perfect. All right, bank deposit, oops, sorry. Uh, bank deposit for interest earned on investment. Oh, awesome. So the bank knows about the interest they're paying us, but I guess we forgot to put it on our books. So we need to add it back. Awesome. Outstanding checks for the current month. Well, if they're outstanding it's the current, from the current month, we need to get the bank balance and we need to minus it because they don't know that we wrote the check, but we do. A company error in recording a $1,280 deposit and we recorded it as $1,680. Oh, our books are too high, so we need to take our books and we need to subtract, subtract. Alrighty, moving on. A bank service charge for an NSF check fee. Well, the bank knows they charge us for it and now we need to record it too. We need to have this amount and minus it from our books. The bank made an error in recording a 2575 deposit as 2755. We need to take that bank balance and until they make the adjustment, we need to adjust it during our reconciliation. So bank ban balance and minus. Ooh, we unexpectedly received an electronic fund transfer for uh, a money on account. So that's awesome. We need to reconcile that on our books and we need to add it. Awesome, how did you do? Sometimes it's important to take a step back and revisit why the heck we're doing all of this. Why is a bank reconciliation an important part of a company's internal control over cash? Well, many of the control activities around cash involve the use of bank depositing cash on a regular basis, comparing cash receipts with bank deposit totals, and preparing monthly bank reconciliations. A company can control its cash by using a bank to safeguard its cash, record and review checks received and written, and electronic funds received and paid. In addition, control is strengthened because a second record is maintained of all bank tra transactions, which can then be compared with the company's records. A bank reconciliation takes these bank records and compares them to the company's cash account records um, and then identifies and verifies the appropriate reason for any discrepancies. So really, it's no different than you being the company, being like, I think we have this much money, and then going and looking at the bank records and being like, that's how much the bank thinks I have, and then figuring out the difference between the two until they match. 
All right, I promised a big bad question and here it is. This is bringing together really much of chapter seven and definitely a large part of the examinable material, both here and on the final. So similar to last time, but now we're gonna be looking at debits and credits, but don't worry, we kind of said whether it adds to the bank account or um, subtracts to the bank account. So, you know, you can still, in theory, not kind of ignore the debits and credits, although please don't ignore the debits and credits. Um, so for each one of these transactions, complete the table. Um, there might be a check mark in a couple or one, or it doesn't, maybe none. And then let me know, is there a journal entry that is required? So give this one a go. And on the next time when you come back, uh, so please pause the video. And when you come back, we will do a debrief of this. Thank you so much. All right, it's April. These 10 items may or may not be involved in the bank reconciliation process for April. Let's look at this. Our first one, deposits in transit at the end of April. So if they're deposits in transit, that means we need to add them to the bank account because we've already, you know, recorded on our books. We know what we did. We know that like, hey, yeah, awesome, more cash. It's going over here. Um, and no journal entry is required because we do not touch the bank accounts journals. Like we are not, we are not their accountants. So we do not journalize this for them. All, sorry, deposits in transit at the beginning of April that cleared the bank in April. What do we do with this? Nothing. Uh, so they were, oops, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it over here, and I am going to say nothing happens with this, not applicable. And if it's not applicable, then I also do not have a journal entry, so I'll just put this over here, and I can either leave it as N-A or just put no. Okay, because uh, really it should be no or yes, so we'll put no. Cool, so we put them in transit and they cleared the bank in the same month. We are doing a bank reconciliation for April, Therefore, nothing to reconcile. We are happy. Moving on. Outstanding checks at the beginning of April that cleared the bank in April. You are correct. Again, nothing. Okay, we are on a roll. But identifying when nothing happens means we can also identify when something happens. So let's talk about the outstanding checks at the end of April. What happens with these? Where are we putting this? Well, if they're outstanding, the bank didn't know that they were coming. So we need to take the bank balance and we need to, we need to move this. <sighs> Sorry, okay, one sec. We need to take this and we need to move it to the bank and we need to deduct it. All right, so right here. And this is what we need to do with it. They had checks, I can't use a check, we were gonna do an X. And so if it's an adjustment that I am making to the bank, that means no, I do not journalize it because I am not the bank's accountant. Okay, deposit of 400 made in error by the bank to the company's account. So the bank made an error, error um, we didn't. So we are going to take that and we are going to, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I'll go back to number five in just a second, so I'll finish off number six. Deposit $400 made in bank by error to the company, so I need to then um, deduct it as well because they thought we had money, we didn't actually have it, we need to make that adjustment. Do we journalize anything here? No, because we don't journalize anything for the bank. All right, bumping up to number five, Bank service charges, the bank knows that they charge us money for it, uh, but we likely haven't recorded it yet. Um, so therefore we need to come here and we need to deduct this from our books. And if we are going to deduct it from our books, then absolutely we are going to need to journalize it because that's how we're gonna make the deduction. Um, debit, bank fees expense, bank fee expense, uh, credit cash. All right, so yes, over here. All right, now we are back to number seven. Check written for 250 
recorded in error as 520 on the books. So we have it wrong. We thought we, um, we were sending out 520. We actually needed to only send out 250. That means we need to adjust our books and we need to add it to our books. So we're gonna take this and we are going to add it to our books right here. And because it's hitting our books, absolutely, we are going to need to make an adjustment for it. We're gonna to need to debit our cash and we are going to credit um, whatever expense um, we put that to. Cool. Non-sufficient fund NSF check received from a customer. Oh goodness. So we thought we had their cash and then it bounced. They're like the person in the grocery store, it bounced. So we absolutely need to minus the cash because we don't have it. I'm gonna probably credit our cash and debit in accounts receivable. So yes, because we had an entry that happened on our books, uh, we need to make that journal entry. All right, couple more, you're doing good, then we're done, promise. Um, for real. EFT, electronic fund transfer collection on account not previously recorded by the company. Woohoo! Somebody is giving us money. We didn't record it yet. We got to record it and add that money. So thank you so much. We are going to debit our cash and we are going to credit the accounts receivable because it was money paid on account. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, oh, this is another piece of good news for our company. Interest earned on bank account. Yes. Take this, add this. Thank you so much. We are going to record a little journal entry. We're gonna record a little journal entry. We are going to debit cash. We are going to credit interest revenue. And uh, people, this is cash, your big bad problem. Practice makes uh, better. Practice makes perfect. Practice is what is going to cement this in. Thank you so, so much. And for those of you uh, joining me for my colleagues class, thank you uh, for stopping in. If you have any questions, um, you're welcome to um, email me or him, uh, <laughs> you know, um, whatever he decides. Listen, uh, thank you so much for showing up. And I hope everybody here, thank you, thank you. Have a fabulous week and best of luck on your mini test on Friday. Take care.